Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good. Do we want that kind of leadership, my friends? Do we want more delay? Do we want more dither and drift and deadlock and division? Do we want 2020 to be another year of defeatism and despair? No, we don't. We want to move forward because this country has an incredible future. And, and here, here it is, I believe, as at least the partial blueprint for that future. And today, in this manifesto, we pledge 50,000 more nurses and their bursaries and 50 million more GP surgery appointments. And today, we make this guarantee to the British people that we will tackle crime with 20,000 more police officers and tougher sentencing and that we will sort out our immigration system with a points-based Australian-style system. As for Labour, they'll plainly give in to Nicola Sturgeon and waste the whole of next year in two more referendums, one on Scotland and one on the EU. Except that Jeremy Corbyn won't tell us whether he would even be willing to advise people to vote in favour of his own deal. <laughs> he used to be indecisive. Now he's not so sure. <laughs> Do you want to wake up on Friday the 13th of December and find a nightmare on Downing Street? A, a, Corbyn, a Corbyn Sturgeon coalition of chaos? I say, let's go carbon neutral by 2050 and Corbyn neutral by Christmas. Let's go. We will get Brexit done, and we will end the acrimony and the chaos, whereas they want to rip up our deal and negotiate a new one. But we don't yet know of a single Labour MP, or indeed any other MP, who would support this deal. In fact, we don't even know if anybody believes in Mr Corbyn's new deal apart from Mr. Corbyn. And not even he believes in it. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the negotiations uh, that would take place if, if, if this, uh, the Corbyn-Sturgeon coalition were to come in? What on earth are they supposed to think in Brussels? Bonjour, Monsieur Corbyn. Comment allez-vous? Tell us about this deal that you want. What do you mean? <laughs> you, you don't really want it? What do you mean you, you don't really believe in it? You're not going to have advocate it. Then who does believe in it? Not Monsieur McDonnell? Not Monsieur Stamer? Not Madame Abbott? <laughs> then who does believe in it? Who? It will be... It's farcical. We will, uh, we will not be cutting our, our armed services in any form. We will be maintaining the size of our armed services. And I'm delighted to see Secretary of State for Defence nodding uh, fervently in the, fr in the front row. Uh, and that's because we are increasing funding for our armed services. Uh, we are maintaining our NATO 2% uh, commitment uh, and more. And actually, we're going to be increasing uh, our, our funding uh, by 0.5% above uh, inflation every year of this parliament because we believe in our armed services. I mean, I've, I've travelled around the world and um, they, are, they are loved. The armed services of the United Kingdom... The armed services of, of, the, armed services of the United Kingdom are perhaps the most admired uh, export uh, that this country has in some parts of the world and they do a fantastic amount of of good. This is a new government. It's a very active government. It's a very dynamic and positive government. We believe passionately in the future of our country and its ability to do great things. Uh, we think now is the time to invest in our public services, in education, in the NHS and in infrastructure, but to do it in a way that maintains the long-term uh, prosperity of the UK economy. And that is, what we will, that is what we will do. Get Brexit done and we can restore confidence and certainty to business and to families. Get Brexit done and we'll see a pent-up tidal wave of investment into this country. Get Brexit done and we can focus our hearts and our minds on the priorities of the British people. And a Britain that is able to lead the world, as we do, in tackling climate change and reducing our CO2, as I say, to net zero by 2050, not because we hate capitalism and want to destroy it, and want pointlessly to make an enemy of enterprise, but because the private sector makes the brilliant technical breakthroughs that enable us to cut CO2 and 
pay for great public services and create great high-skilled jobs. Uh, all Labour governments end uh, with an economic crisis. The only difference with uh, Corbyn and Macdonald is, as far as I can see, they propose to start with an economic <laughs> crisis uh, and, and, make it, and make it worse. As I say, we have this deal ready to go. It is, it is you know, just add water. Uh, put it, it's, it's, it's there. Uh, we, can, we, we can then get the whole thing completed in a matter of uh, days, if not weeks, and we're out by January the 31st. And I, and I, and I, I, com I, com I compare. And in 10 years' time, I confidently prophesy that people will be passionately proud of their Scottish identity and their wealth, Welsh and Northern Irish, and yes, their English identity. And that will be a great thing. But we will also all be citizens of a proud, strong, and whole United Kingdom. More united. More, more united than 